Hello and welcome back to another Fabled Lands video, where I'll be continuing my quest through the war-torn kingdom. I'm currently trying out a new location for my mic. It's now up over here instead of down here, so hopefully it captures my voice better. We'll see. But it's actually been a while since my last video on this. I haven't been feeling well the past few weeks, but I went ahead, looked up what happened last time, and we left off with Franklin Cartwright. Still in Marlock City, a town run by the General Marlock himself. I view him as a tyrannical ruler who, and that I feel is justified as he hangs the corpses of his enemies outside of his city. As Franklin, the mage in training, we had just finished exploring most of Marlock City itself. We hadn't achieved much so far until, that is, we found a place known as the Gambler's Den, where I finally gambled my way to making some money. Now up to 51 shards. And just as we were leaving, we were able to help a sorcerer in need from being mugged and was rewarded with a vial of yellow dust to be used at a later date. And not long after, found myself running into a burning house in hopes of saving someone. And despite what I thought, we were able to succeed and not die in the process. Having saved a sorceress named Alicia, and rewarded for saving her with the Moonstone of Teleportation. Presumably a one-time use item where I could just retreat at any moment and return to Marlock City. And that is where I last left off. Having left the decision of where to go next in the viewer's hands. Whether to immediately go kill the ghoul, go back to the barracks and irritate the guards, or head south in hopes of continuing a quest to find the pirate, Amcha, the One-Eye. And then there was also the option to just go somewhere else, as there was a whole list of places I could have gone outside the city. But from the looks of it, the votes are neutral, so it'll be up to me to decide where the adventure heads next. So, back to Marlock City we go, in the war-torn kingdom. We are back at 100 which is the center of Marlock City, with all the choices to go. I'm thinking of going ahead and attempting to fight the ghoul. But before I do that, something I realized while editing was there may be one additional action I can do while exploring the city. So I'll go ahead and do that and I'll let you know what I had in mind. 138. You take a stroll through the streets, Marlock City is teeming with people. Now what I had in mind was going back to the residential quarter because I took a note that I wrote down a tick on that page, which was the, the incident with the fire. What I'm thinking is if I go back now, there might be a different event because I had to tick the paragraph before reading about the fire. So I want to see what happens now that that's all done and settled. To the residential quarters. Again. 619. If there's a tick in the box, which there is, turn to 339 immediately. 339. You find a burned out house in the poor quarter where a trader has set up a stall, selling ashes and debris. The merchant, a weasley looking old woman, is screeching. Ashes! Ashes from the house of a sorceress! Fifteen shards a packet! If you want to buy some, cross off 15 shards and note the ashes on your adventure sheet. If you're ready, head back to the center of town and turn to 100. I think I will go ahead and buy these ashes. And just based on what I've experienced, I might know a place where I could use them. While at the Harbor Master, one of the places I could go is the Isle of the Sorcerer's Isle or something like that. Which I think was 30 shards to go. So I might have to go back to Gambler's Den before doing that. But for now I will buy the shards for <laughs> buy the ashes for 15 shards. That'll put me back at 36. Alright, I now have ashes. And if they can't be used at the sorcerer's isle like I'm guessing, then maybe there's a way to meet up with Alicia again and maybe she can do something with it. 
for now, back to Marlock City, the town center. And yeah, I'm, I'm I didn't really have any intentions of messing with the guards again. They were drunk. I could see that getting into a fight. Not a combatant at all. That's why I didn't want to fight that tree. <laughs> yeah, I was just. I'd rather avoid that. So. But, but taking out the ghouls still a fight. And are they really any harder than drunken guards would be? <laughs> let's do it. Let's. Let's deal with the ghoul. Potentially cover up something. But I'm an adventurer. Killing undead is what I do. If you have... Okay, 138. If you have the code word agu, turn to 115 and I do. 115. If you are on a quest for the Temple of Nagil to bring it the head of the escaped ghoul, turn to 446. Yes, I am, unfortunately... Hopefully this doesn't kill me. <laughs> uh, why can't I go on a safe adventure? I do have that stone now. I guess if things get too hazy, I could always just teleport out of the fight. But if it is a one-time use item, then that's it. Kind of hoping it's not. I'm kind of hoping it's a. I can just use it to teleport the town quickly. 446. If there's a tick in the box... Turn to 222 immediately. If not, put a tick there now and read on. 446 then. You set out that night on your quest. Make a magic roll at a difficulty of 10. Alright, something I am good at. So, I'm actually going to use one of my newer dice, this orange one, along with the purple. Just gotta beat a 10. I have a plus six. Here we go. That on the dice is a nine with a four and a five. With my six, <laughs> that makes a 15. I think I beat it. Successful magic roll. Turn to 511. This is turning out swell so far. Why not do a magic though? Why not? I like it tracking. Whatever. It's something I'm good at. <laughs> Why complain? Although I wasn't scouting my second best skill, so whatever. Your arcane knowledge tells you much about the undead. Ghouls are known to eat the flesh of the dead as well as the living. They like to make their homes in crypts and graveyards, and they never venture out during the day. As sunlight burns their pallid, undead flesh. Also, they cannot abide... A powder of salt and iron fillings mixed together. You can purchase these ingredients for 15 shards at many a market stall. If you make the purchase, note you have salt and iron fillings on your adventure sheet. Well, that <laughs> explains the magic check. Luckily, I'd gotten some money in advance and didn't spend it all before I did this. It's also very convenient how it was asking for 15 shards when you started with 16, but I'll take it. Yes, we will indeed buy the salt and iron fillings so I can have a better chance to get this to go. <laughs> I am definitely going to have to go back to Gambler's Den now because I am down to 21 shards. Alright, when you are ready, you set off to search the cemeteries of Marlock City. Make a scouting roll at difficulty 9. <laughs> See, that's what I was expecting at first. Okay. I do orange die again. That did me well. Along with the black die. And, well, the purple die did me well as well. Um, <laughs> well as well. I need to beat a scouting roll of 9. Difficulty 9. With my scouting of 5, this should work out well for me. With a six and oh, oh wow, okay, two sixes. Jeez, okay, I don't even think I need to add that up, even with a 17 on my scouting. Okay, successful scouting roll, we got a 419. So far, this ghoul hunt is turning out sw really swell. 419. The trail 
of gruesome murders and tales of terror lead you to an old cemetery in a near deserted part of the old quarter. It is early morning, a few hours from daylight, so you haven't much time before it goes into hiding. At the gates of the cemetery you find a small girl, hunched over, sobbing. When she sees you, she backs away terrified. Oh, jeez. Oh, this cannot be good. I gotta make a charisma roll now. I'm making a lot of rolls all of a sudden. Make a charisma roll at difficulty 10. Really did get lucky at that tree. The orange die isn't... The black die did well today. I'm gonna go with orange and red. Charisma, difficulty 10. I have to get 11 or higher. To hopefully not scare off the little girl. Double fives. That's a 10 on the dice. And a... What was it? Charisma again? So, 12 total. Jeez, I rolled two five, and it still was just barely enough. But, dice are doing well for me today. Kind of feel bad, because I'm just succeeding all over the place. 553. You convince her that you mean no harm. The little girl tells you that she was placing flowers at a grave for, of her father. When a horrible monster came for her, fortunately, she was able to run away. She points you to a large tomb behind which the thing was hiding. You tell the girl to go home, and then you set out, warily for the tomb. Suddenly, a foul stench fills your nostrils, and a figure rises up out of the shadows. Yellow eyes glow with feral bloodlust, and the creature's talons, encrusted with dried blood, Reach for you hungrily. You've found the ghoul. My options are to fight it, invoke the power of the gods, or use some salt and iron fillings. Well, I paid for it, so let's use it. 303. Cross off the salt and iron fillings from your adventure sheet. You stayed on the page for so long. That was my longest held item to date. Cross off the salt and iron fillings from your adventure sheet. As fast as you can, you lay out a line of the powder in front of you. The ghoul gives a moaning wail and shrieks back, unable to cross the line of salt and iron fillings. Quickly, you run around the ghoul, encircling it with the powder. The creature lunges for you, but it cannot cross the line. You keep it at bay at every turn. Soon, it is completely trapped, casually, you sit on a tombstone and wait for sunrise. When it comes, the ghoul is burnt to a crisp. You take the rotting, charred head and make your way back to town. Note, you have a ghoul's head and turn to 100. Well, that was fucking easy. <laughs> yeah, that was damn easy. Okay. I don't even know if I should be bothered to write it down. It's not going to be in my inventory very long. Alright. I now have one ghoul's head. I had booked March 100, so I don't have to keep opening it open. Alright, well, that was fairly easy. Luckily, I succeeded the magic check to get the easy way, the scouting check to find it, and the charisma check to find it immediately. How fortunate am I today? Although... I've barely passed two charisma checks so far. I think one of the temples offers a blessing for that. I should probably go there when I have more money from the gambler's den. <laughs> but in the meantime, let's see what happens when I turn in this quest. Temple of McGill. If you have the code word agu, agu, agu. Turn to 517 immediately. If you have the ghoul's... Okay, 517. If you have the ghoul's head, turn to 597. 597. You did it! exclaims the warden happily, taking the ghoul's head and placing it in a jar. Cross it off your adventure sheets. Well, well that was the longest held item I've had this whole game. You can have a cho... Choice. You can have a choice of a reward. That 
those choices being an amber wand, which provides a plus one to magic. F 500 shards? Jeez. Or a free recon or a free resurrection deal, which weren't those 600? If you do not already have one, if you do not have one already, that is, of the resurrection, you can choose only one of these three rewards. Hmm. To arrange resurrection, right, Temple of McGill, War Torn Kingdom 350, in the resurrection box of your infant, if you're later killed, turn to 350. Hmm. Interesting choices. So, I could choose an item, so take up a possession spot, but increase my magic by one, I choose money. Which is something I was planning on getting more of anyway. I'm down to 21. Or a free resurrection in the event that I die. I think I'm going to go with the resurrection, and here's why. My magic is already pretty high. It's my Currently my highest stat at a 6. And I gather a wand is probably... That pr oh, plus 1 wand, the amber wand that is. It's probably going to be around 500 to buy one myself. So, we can worry about that later. The money is nice, but I'm not sure what I would buy with it right now, because I feel the money and the wand are like in the same area. Unless I, and I won't, if I had the money, I probably wouldn't even want a house right now, even though I could buy it at this point, but I also plan to already go gambling, so... I can hopefully make enough money that way. But from what I remember, the resurrection is 600 for being a non-initiate of that temple. And I don't really plan on becoming an initiate of that temple. So I feel that is the best option I've been given. So I'm going to go ahead and take the resurrection as my reward. As I knock over my table. Alright. And with that, finally, if you are suffering from ghoul bite disease, turn to 156. I am not. Otherwise, you return to town, turn to 100. Quest complete. Alright, that wasn't nearly as hard as I was making it out to be. But likely only because I kept succeeding. <laughs> uh, bound to fail eventually. So... Where to go now? I could head for Amcha, one eye. I don't know where the Force of Forsaken is. Let me check my large map again that I have of a bigger surrounding area. Maybe I overlooked it. Oh, hey. Wasn't it somewhere in Golnir, which is right next to Sakura? So I gather that the Boar's Tusk can be acquired in a different book. Whichever book Golnir is, whether that's hopefully two, because that's what I have. <laughs> so that's a potential option. And I have no idea where the fat village of the Blessed Springs is. Check the map. Oh! The village of the Blessed Springs is actually in Sakura. I could actually do that. Okay. Uh, Sorcerer's Island kind of wanted to do that, but I think it's in a different book. Oh, there's the unnumbered isles on the map as well. Probably run into those on your way to the Sorcerer's Isle. They're not on the map for Sakura, so I would assume they're in a different book. Hmm. I guess if I wanted to stick to this book for now, I should take care of the yellow dust. But part of me really wants to check out the Sorcerer's Isle. <laughs> Especially since I know I can get a ride there. If it wasn't for the Harbor Master, I wouldn't know anything about it. You know, if I want to go to Sorcerer's Isle, I need 30 shards. Need money. I could also go to Copper Island. Hmm. That's further south. Based on the map layout, I would assume going to Sorcerer's Isle would have you run into the unnumbered isles. Going to Copper Isles, you'd probably get a straight shot there. Or just going to either one would give you the option to go there, maybe. But definitely going to Sorcerers, you'd probably run into it. 
think for now, I'll try and make back a little bit of money that I spent with the gamblers did. Whether I pass or fail, I'll probably just stick to this book and head off to the Blessed Springs and see what this vial is all about and how that can hopefully help them. 138. You take a stroll through the streets. Marlock City is teeming with people. And we are going to visit the Street of Entertainers. 129. Psst! Come here, friend! Someone whispers from the shadows. Go over to him. He should recognize me. I've been here before. Want to try your luck at Gambler's Den? Ask a short, dark man dressed in a mercenary's bodyguard. Just five shards entrance fee. He holds the door at the top of some rickety stairs. If you pay the money, cross it off and turn to 91. We shall. We shall. Back down to my starting amount of 16 shards. It's like I've done nothing. Alright, I would like to try and get back to 50 at the very least. See how my luck holds me this time. He smiles and takes you into the Gambler's Den. It is a smoke-filled casino filled with all kinds of dubious looking characters playing cards and dice. If you want to gamble, decide how much you want to bet to a maximum of 20 shards and roll two dice. Let's start off with a 10. That way I can at least bet one more time. Okay, this orange die has done me well. Let's use the green one this time. I haven't used it yet today. Six. Did I get that the first time last time? I lost money, damn it. <laughs> great start. Great, great start. Okay, we need to... We need to, uh... Hit in the bottom of the barrel. Minus two. I need to either low or high, unfortunately. Let's try orange and black. Four. Win twice your bets. I get four shards. Oh, this is going to be a nightmare to edit. <laughs> okay. Um, let's bet what? Three. Let's bet three. Keep going with these two until they fail me. Six. They have failed me. Okay. Um, one was low, one was high. Let's just... Great. What am I going to bet now? Of... I'm going to bet two. This is pathetic. Red and green. Five. I'm... Oh my gosh. Okay. <laughs> I'm running out of money. I'm running out of money. I'm gonna bet one. I need to make money. This is the opposite of what I wanted. I shouldn't have started with ten. Purple green. Ten. Win twice your bet. I get two. Oh jeez. Okay. Oh jeez. <laughs> I have four shards. I'm gonna bet one for a while. This is gonna take a while. Green and purple. Four and eight. With the loss. Ah, oh, jeez. Came in here with 21, didn't I? At this point, there's nothing to lose. Minus one. Again. Orange, purple. Four and nine. Minus one. Down to one shard. Green orange. Four six. You know the odds are supposed to be in my favor with a six to one. <laughs> this is the last time I can bet. I'm down to one fucking shard. <laughs> Why not? One. Red, purple. Eight. It's a loss. I'm out of money. Okay. <laughs> Maybe I should have taken that 500. Then I could have lost it all. That was just downhill. Barely any successes. 
Okay, I'm out of money. <sighs> when you're ready to leave, put a tick in the box and turn to 109. Unless there's already the box already ticked. In which case, go to 100, which is back to town. No money. Yeah, I'm definitely not going to be able to leave. Uh, that was the whole point of me gambling, is I wanted to go to Sorcerer's Isle. So I'm definitely sticking to Sakura. Definitely sticking to Sakura. Well, at least now I can't get mugged. There's nothing they can, well, they can take my items. Hmm. Okay, so, based on what I observe on the map here, to get to Blessed Springs, I first need to head to Tree Foley? Foley? And the best way after that is to head to Yellowport, then to Venifax, and then I'll get to Blessed Springs. Yellowport was one of the places I've also could have gone in the beginning. Alternatively, I could head to the Shadar Tor first, then head up to Tree Foley, which I think I'll take up on that offer. Maybe they would have a better price for sailing there. But it also looks like a rock, so it doesn't really look like a town. But why not? I have no money. Got nothing to lose. Let's head to the Shadar Tor first. Maybe I can learn more about the person I'm supposed to be hunting for another quest. Head southeast towards the Shadar Tor. 166. You are on a road between Marak City and the Shadar Tor. Along most of the length of the road, a thin silver of Shanty Town has grown up. Tents and lean toasts line the way. You find out that the people living here are refugees from Trifoli. The city was burnt to the ground during the recent civil war, in which the old king was overthrown. Roll a die. One die. Looks like there's three different results. Here we go. Orange, you've been leading me on this journey so far with a two. Roll one or two. A pickpocket. You lose ten shards. Well, fuck you. I have none. So neither one of us come out on top. <laughs> when you are finished, you can go to Marlock City. Or head for the Shadar Tor. Okay. Madden to Shadar Tor. It looks like I could have once, well, found something along the way. There was a 1 in 3 chance of that happening. An equal amount to be pickpocketed, but you know, I have nothing. So they don't win, I don't win, everything's neutral. Fuck them. 35. You come to the top of a windswept cliff. An ancient pillar of jumbled rock, piltered and weather-beaten stands at the cliff's edge, like a broken finger pointing to the sky. Seagulls sing their song of a desolation in the air. Also comes with a picture. I'll have to scan that in. Judging by the runes etched into the rock, the tour dates back to the time of the Shadar, a race that ruled Harkuna so long ago. They are lost in myth and legend. And my options are four things. I can examine the runes, go down to the beach, take the road to Tree Foley, or take the road to Marlock City. Well, I came here as basically a stopping point, so let's go ahead and examine the runes first. I feel a magic check coming along. 515. Make a magic roll at difficulty 11. If I fail out by one, I'm going to be mad that I didn't pick up that wand. Which ones have been rolling high for me? i go with uh, orange and black. Eleven on the dice! Oh, sweet. Ah, I'm succeeding at the right times. So that is a total of 17. Right, this page. Successful magic roll. I can succeed outside of gambling, that is. 205. The runes are written in Old Shadar, 
an ancient language from thousands of years ago. You realize that the runes from a spell that will give you the power to breathe underwater for a few hours. Did I read that right? Let the runes form a spell. Okay. Okay, so it allows me to breathe underwater. Hmm. I wouldn't have to make the check every time. I succeeded once. Well, I can use the spell and swim out to sea. <laughs> Natural reaction, or go down to the beach. Huh. Interesting. I mean, I know what it does. I could always just come back to it. I plan to explore the beach before I leave. Hmm. Well, I already know what the spell is, so we might as well just swim out the sea. Why not? 493. Gills grow out of your cheeks as soon as you have read the runes aloud. You make your way down a track to the beach and swim out to sea. The gills work perfectly and you find yourself swimming in the eerie silence of a submarine world. Suddenly, a hideous form loons out of the murk. It is rather like a giant squid. But it carries a spear. Wait, what? It carries a spear in one of its many tentacles and wears rudimentary armor. Great black eyes shine with the Im the implacable alien intelligence. If you have the code word anchor, which I do not, turn to 116. Otherwise, turn to 238. Someone's gonna die. His name is me! 238. The vile looking creature shoots towards you with a terrifying predatory speed. You have no choice but to fight it. Damn. Hmm. Okay. My first official fight, if we don't want to count the ghoul, which I'm kind of not. So, it's giving me the stats here. It's called the repulsive one. Surprised there's no picture here of it. It has a combat of 5, a defense of 10, and a stamina of 10. Defense 10, huh? I think I've lost this fight. Great. You must subtract 2 from your dice rolls for this fight. Oh my gosh. So I'm going off dice roll, because my combat is a 2. So in order to hurt this thing, I had to roll 11s and 12s. Oh my gosh. Yeah, you have to subtract 2 from your dice rolls for this fight, as you are unused to underwater combat. Oh, I gotta look at the rules. Do I have to roll 2 dice for them? I hope not. Should've just gone to the beach. Should've just gone to the beach. So here, on the quick rolls. Fighting involves a series of combat rolls. The difficulty of the roll is equal to the opponent's defense score. Your defense score is equal to your rank, plus your armor, plus your combats. Which is why mine's a 4. The amount you beat the difficulty by is the number of stamina points your opponent loses. So I'm guessing they also get 2 dice? Or is it a 1 dice roll? I assume it's 2 dice, because it's like 2 dice for everything. If the enemy is now down to zero stamina, then he is defeated. Otherwise, he will strike back at you using the same procedure. If you survive, you get a chance to attack again. And the battle goes on until one of you is victorious. So yes, they get two dice. Okay. Repulsive one, huh? They have a combat of five, so they hit me no matter what. They have a defense and stamina of ten. Additionally, I get negative two on my attacks. So basically I'm just going off pure dice roll. So the only way to hurt this thing is to get 11s and 12s every single time. Doing one or two damage respectively. At best, I could take him out in five turns. If I am really lucky. And I haven't been so far. At worst, I die in probably two at most. Two hits. So let's see here. They have five. Shouldn't have gotten in water. Let's pretend I rolled a 12 for them. 
add five. She just add one because to get past my twelve. So yeah, one hit would automatically kill me from this thing. No big surprise there. <sighs> Let's say I rolled two for my opponent every single time. Somehow. Seven. That would be three. Three, six, nine. The most amount of turns I can last against this thing is three turns. And the earliest I can kill this thing is five. <laughs> if you win, turn to 53. If you lose, your adventuring days are over! Unless you have a resurrection deal. <laughs> Yay, I'm glad I got that already. <sighs> Ah, there it is. Okay, I was looking for this. Uh, yes. Listed in the example under the fighting, it says you're a third rank of character with a combat of four and you have to fight a goblin. The fight begins with your attack. You always get first blow unless told otherwise. That is what I was looking for quick. Thought I had read that earlier and I wanted to just make sure before I began this fight. Fight. So, I'm faced with two options here. Option one, fight it and die, because I have no chance. Upon which, we'll use up my resurrection arrangements that I just got. Presumably, losing my m <laughs> money, which I have none. So no loss there, but also probably losing my items, as I highly doubt they can just resurrect your possessions. <sighs> Option two. I use the moonstone that I just got. That I was thinking uh, it might be a one-time use. Let's use it in a dire situation. I am in a dire situation. So I'm probably going to lose the moonstone. But at least I won't go through the traumatic experience of dying and being reborn. So, here we go. I'm gonna, and luckily because I start first in combat unless specified otherwise. Falcon creature shoots towards you with a terrifying predatory speed. You have no choice but to fight it. And it doesn't say it goes first. So, turn one. I rub the moonstone of teleportation to save my ass. Never go in the water. Got it. 650. Cross the moonstone off your adventure sheet. Yeah, it was a one-time thing. I was really hoping that would be like a thing I would use really late in the game against some epic boss or something and I'm like ah I just can't do it this time luck wasn't on my side use the moonstone and leave but no it's happening when I'm still rank one <sighs> damn I really wanted to hold on to this thing just always have it now it's gone <sighs> it's frustrating there is a flash and suddenly you find yourself in a warm comfortable room Beside Alicia, the Traveler, the sorceress you, sorceress you rescued from her burning house. Alicia will heal you of all lost stamina points if you are wounded, and cure you of any disease or poisons you may be suffering from. Well, that would have been fantastic if I was ever in that kind of situation. My debt to you is now paid, she says. With that... She passes her hands through the air and disappears in a cloud of smoke. You find yourself in an inn at Murloc City. You venture out into town, slightly dazed, turn to 100. And I think that is where we're going to end for today. Because I am out of money. And I no longer have the precious stone I acquired 
at the end of the last video. So, I guess now we decide where the adventure goes next. I'm done in Marlock City. I don't have any money, so I can't really do anything else here. So really, at this point, my only options are to leave. I can head east towards Trefoily, which we now know is a town that was burnt to the ground. Great. I can head southeast back towards Shadar Tor, and maybe see if there's something at the beach. And avoid the water at all costs. I could go follow the Grim North, the River Grim North. Take a journey north into the Crustmoor. Hmm. Oh, on the map looks like some sort of grassland. Or I could head west to the River Grim Delta. Presumably taking me to a different book. <sighs> My thoughts are to head back to Shadar Tor just to check out the beach and mourn the loss of my stone before heading to Tree Foley and figure it out from there as I try and make my way to the Blessed Springs. But ultimately the option lies to you, the viewer, to help decide where this journey goes next. So until next time, just thanks for watching and hopefully you'll have a better time than I have.